Confirm and go live. Uh, can you do me a favor? Uh, Charlie, Charlie's the name. Can you go and check and see if the music is coming across as doubled? Because I was having that issue if you listen to the uh, video that I posted, the overlay creation, the music is kind of doubled up. So I just want to make sure the music isn't coming across double, and then we're good to go. We are currently live. Well, I went live. Should be live. There we go. Cool. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of our Glacier Ridge campaign. Got it right this time. Um, this is our Monster of the Week campaign. Monster of the Week is a different TTRPG, tabletop RPG for, or tabletop role-playing game for people who need the whole breakdown. Um, basically, it is a recreation for the tabletop of your favorite Monster of the Week TV series. Uh, Supernatural, X-Files, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Dresden Files, things like that, where they face a different monster every week. Um, and have to figure out how to take care of it, take it down, something like that. Um, although, let's be honest, the only monster in uh, X-Files is aliens, right? Right, guys? Yeah. No, there's lots of monsters in X-Files. It ran for way too long, let's be honest. Uh, same with Supernatural, though. So, uh, Anyway, so this is our Glacier Ridge campaign. What is Glacier Ridge? Technically nothing. Glacier Ridge is a fictional village in uh, the Northwest Territories. Uh, closest place to Glacier Ridge would be Fort Simpson, which is a real place in the Northwest Territories. However, this town is about a two-hour hike from Nahani Valley National Park. Now, if you don't know what Nahani Valley National Park is, I recommend looking into it because it's kind of cool. But just to give you a basic rundown, there's some weird things that have happened there. Um, there's some uh, murders and things that have taken place. I say murders could be, could be an accident like the, uh, people say that it is, but basically, uh, headless bodies were found there, burnt, um, doesn't make sense that it'd just be an animal attack to me, but hey, everybody has their own opinion. Uh, stuff has been found, um, people believe there could be giants there, people believe dinosaurs might still live there. There's different theories along the way. Um, so, tonight, we are going to go over a few things. So, um, this campaign is basically a paranormal investigation TV series, not TV series, online series, uh, called The Search, has been off the air for about two years. During that two years, uh, they had been doing research and trying to find the right crew in order to investigate uh, what they have researched into, which of course is the Nahani Valley National Park. With that, they hired a crew. This is our crew, and they are going to Nahani Valley or Glacier Ridge to investigate, try and figure out what's going on. Uh, right now, Tonight, we are hiring another researcher slash analyst uh, who is going to be introduced in a little bit. So. There's no music. Are you. Are you sure? You're hearing double of me. Oh, okay. Um, that's interesting. Do I have to? How do I add the sound?
thought I did, but okay. Um, if I click on, would it be audio input capture or audio output capture? Output, output, output. Oh, I hear music. Okay. Do you still hear it? Yep, and I heard myself. Sweet. Okay, so fix that. We got it figured out. Oh man, the chat box is majorly cut off. How do I shrink that? How do I make that fit? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The stream. <laughs> that might be messing around with the actual pixels on that one. Okay. No, it's cool. Nobody chats with us anyway. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> watch. Somebody's going to show up tonight and chat with us. <laughs> um, all right. So, where was I? Um, so yeah, that's basically what's going on in the campaign. Um, what happened last week? Our investigators chatted up a few more people. They went to go talk to somebody at the library named Arya. They went to go chat with her son named Finn. Uh, Wyatt was the liaison, of course, between uh, Finn and the rest of the party. Um... Why it's the only local, correct? No, why it's the only child. Okay. There is no locals. It is just yeah. Um so they went and chatted with him. They gave him Finn gave them a little bit more information, but it pretty much told them everything that he knew already. Um I think after that they went to go talk to uh the owner of the Blackwood Apothecary. Which, of course, is Cassandra Blackwood. Um, she told them that the town has a dark energy to it. Um, then they went to the bar, I think. I think it was the bar after that. I could be wrong. Um, they went to the bar after that and kind of met up at the bar to discuss what their best bets were. Uh... Maxine went to chat with a table that consisted of Charlotte and then uh, two other ladies with dark hair, Sophia and Isabella. Um, Sophia is the owner of Glacier General and Isabella is the owner of Tremaine's Curiosities. Um, when she was talking to them, she got the feeling that Charlotte didn't really want to talk to her about this stuff in front of other people. And uh, the elder Tremaine, Isabella, um, she basically said that it was necessary for these types of dark energies to exist in this world because the tide comes in, tide goes out, and that's how life exists. You need the balance. Uh, so after that, you guys left, uh, I think Wyatt took off back to the hotel at this point, uh, and they were sitting and chatting when the power went out at the pub. When the power went out at the pub, it was only out for about 10, 15 seconds, but in that time, Charlie looked outside and saw creepy red eyes staring through the window. At that, he immediately got up, ran out the door before the lights even came back on, and saw nothing outside. Uh, so he went and was like, wait, Wyatt went home. So he chased down Wyatt. Wyatt heard loud footsteps running towards him uh, and immediately dove into an alleyway thinking he was being chased. Uh, Charlie and Wyatt then heard a voice on the wind saying that he was there to um I forget exactly what he said let me just pull that back up so anybody... fear or something yeah does anybody else remember what he said or do i have to pull it up this is all going off memory so i thought it was pretty much he just wanted to scare people i think that was the case yeah oh are you talking about what i learned 
No, what not that. What the voice in the wind what was. What the voice in the wind was. Uh, yeah. He... He was saying, basically, that he weaves sh frosty illusions. His laughter echoes into the night. And then, yeah, you heard the hyena laugh that was told to you by one of the other, one of the shopkeepers. I think that was Charlie. Uh, Charlie being Charlotte. Um... I love how there's two Charlies. Well, one is a guy and one is a girl, so I <laughs> think I need to call her Charlotte. Um, anyway, so uh, after that, you all went went into the lodge. Wyatt, you did find out, because uh, you have a power as the spooky. What's the power again? Can you remind me and the listeners, possibly? Uh, one second. That came across the mic nice and clear. One sec. No, I'm talking about my opening of a can. Oh. Oh, we did not hear it then. Oh, hi, hi. welcome, welcome <laughs> aboard, Victor and Maxine. Tune in. Tune in. So what tune in allows him to do is basically, uh get an idea of what the monster is wanting to do and i believe he rolled a mixed success which only gave him one correct so the one that he got is basically stating that the monster just wanted to frighten people he wasn't there to hurt anybody at that moment then everybody back at the lodge i think it was just Wyatt and charlie at that point saw a handprint appear in ice so the window frosted over, but it was just a handprint in ice of like bony elongated fingers. And then uh, Charlie ran outside and there was nothing there again. So everybody decided we're going to bed. We're waking up early in the morning and we're going to see if we can find these frosty tracks that uh, Finn had told us about. And that was the end. So before we begin into this game, we're going to have another job interview. And this job interview takes place at the Nahani Lodge with Tom and our newest crew member, Oliver. I have now, a suspicion this guy is not going to get the job. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> um, so, uh, just a quick recap as to... Uh, no, you can kind of talk about it as, as your character. No worries. So, uh, so, uh, you said your name is Oliver. Uh, I see uh, you brought hi, me your... Yeah, hi, Oliver, Oliver Gordon. Good to meet you. Good to meet you too. Uh, you brought me your resume here. Um, so you said that you just got to, uh, Glacier Ridge yourself as well. That's cool. And, uh, who did you, which, uh, you said it was... Evelyn, who told you about the uh, film crew in town? Uh, yeah, uh, Evelyn, we go, yeah, we go way back. Saw the ad. He came, he came to town. Interesting town. Very well. Uh, so, typical interview stuff. Tell me about yourself, Oliver. Oh, you know, just a regular old common day Joe. Uh, I got got some hobbies and just, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here for the job. Good, good. Um, I'm happy to hear that. Um, sorry, cameras just broke because I think people joined the chat, joined the Skype. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, what attracted you to the job then? If you're here for the job. Oh, oh, I'm glad you asked. See, see, I was working down in Boston, the underground tunnels there, and there's a correlation between them and this eight, these Inuvik legends in the same area see look, look i got i got the notes see, see look they're they're all the same this exact the exact same ones same place it's all connected you see that's why i'm really excited about this job oh what is going on nothing that was a... <laughs> uh okay well i mean good uh we we need people who are more to be honest, oh, very dedicated, very dedicated. Uh, a lot of our crew 
is more on the skeptic side of things. We need people who are on the other side, right? We need a balance. So okay, yeah, I believe everything. Okay, well, let's let's calm down a little bit. Maybe maybe nothing's real. You don't know. Um, so what would you say your greatest strength is? Oh, definitely my brain. I am very sharp, Sh sharp, like attack. Oh, that and Judith. Who is Judith? Oh, my Magnum. Got it from a cop. See? Yeah, you don't feel safe anymore, do you? <laughs> very strong. Very strong. 44 Magnum. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm glad to know that you're able to protect yourself because, you know, being in the wilderness, we might run into uh, any sorts of animals oh, or anything. Definitely. Most definitely. So like bears could be out there, wolves, you know, we are in northern Canada, so there's lots of animals. Um, what would you say your greatest weakness is? Oh, you know what? Probably honesty. I am way too honest. Can you give me an example? Um, I accidentally pooped my pants earlier on the way up. I uh, had some dicey meat. Um, it was in the plane ride over. The bathroom was... Anyway, I trusted a fart, and a little lump came out, and that was like only two hours into the five-hour flight, so I got to sit in it for another three hours, hopefully that it would stay moist and warm so that it was clean upable when I got here. Uh, so you are right. That was way too honest. However, I'm glad you're honest above other other options. Well, I don't give a red rat's rocket what you think. Thank you. Uh, how would your previous colleagues describe you? Oh, you know, very... I'm a very average guy. Like, there's really nothing special or different about me. Like, I, I blend very well in crowds. No, I, de I definitely don't know this much about me at all. All right. Um, okay, so we're going to kind of dive into a little bit more to do with the job at this point. So first question, uh, describe your approach to gathering and analyzing information about cryptids and related le legends. Okay. How, how so, do you ensure the accuracy of your research? Oh, you know what? We, uh, I take everything as fact. It's like everything is real to someone, right? So it's like different brush strokes with different colors, even though the color might be wrong when you just add it anyway, take a long step back. Picture's the same. doesn't matter if it's accurate or not. It's the same picture. So you just take all the information as it's facts. And interesting part is it's like you say cryptids, but no, it's cryptid. There's only one kind. And you see the same kind in every single legend. They're all the same thing, just told differently, like those different brushstrokes. Are you saying that it's just one creature? Oh, yes. Interesting. Okay. Or all of the same creature. So it's one creature, but... <laughs> you get it. You get it. You get it. Sure. Yes. Yep. Um, have you worked with a team in, a, in the past? And how do you collaborate with others to piece together the information and develop theories? Uh, vocally. You're like you just talk to them about it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know another way of communicate. Oh, I could text them, I suppose. But yeah, okay. mostly vocally. Okay. Uh, can you provide provide an example of a case where your research skills were crucial in unraveling the mystery behind a cryptid sighting? No. Very honest. Uh, so. Cryptid legends often span different cultures. How do you approach cross-cultural research to gain a comprehensive understanding of the cryptids and their associated folklore in diverse regions? You showed me examples of many different oh, yeah. regions. So how See, do you... You just got to trust everything. Because, I mean, as soon as you start trying to, like, pick out what, what you think is accurate and not, then you leave... leave out chunks of the truth and sometimes those chunks are the most important see like lies will fall apart but if you keep the truth in there then you still got the structure of the whole thing lies are like paint doesn't matter what color it is because it's on the wall the wall of truth that's good to know 
course it'd be like a, if you painted a door like the coyote would run into. Oh, that's different. Sorry. I blacked out there. Go ahead. Okay. Um, what methods do you employ to verify the accuracy and reliability of the data and information gathered during research, especially when dealing with potentially elusive or mythical creatures? Now, I know I say creatures again. I am of the belief that there's different kinds. So... That's okay. You can be wrong. Fair enough. Oh, and the methods... See, I don't employ methods to determine truth or not. I just take it all together at the same time. Everywhere. Okay. You seem to be very interested in the work, which is a good thing. So how do you collaborate with subject matter experts, uh, such as zoologists or anthropologists uh, or folklore experts to ensure a well-rounded and informed approach to cryptid investigations? Oh, you know what? The more information I can gather, the better. Because that's like, that's like taking steps back away from the mosaic. The more information you got, the more you zoom out your focus. All right. No, that's fair. I understand. Um, in your experience, uh, I have a feeling I already know the answer to this question. How do you approach debunking myths or separating fact from fiction when researching cryptid sightings? And can you provide an example where your research led to debunking a popular cryptid claim? Uh, if I told you I could get arrested for murder. Oh. I'm just going to give you a little tip. We can edit that, right? You can, you can just clip. Yeah, you'll, you'll edit that. Thank you. Probably not the best to bring up murder on job oh. interviews. Well, again, sorry. admire the dedication. Just a little tip for you. Uh, how do you incorporate technology into your research process to enhance the efficiency and accuracy of your findings? Okay, here's the thing. They control the technology. You cannot trust the screens, man. As soon as you, as soon as you get onto the Google machine or the Wikipedia, which I use extensively, but that's the same thing with, the, with getting all the information and taking those steps back, you see. But they control all that. They, they show you what they want you to see, but that's how we catch them. Because there's always a lie that'll unfold into a truth, you see, and that's how that's how we'll find them. I'm very confident about that. Good. Uh, usually, these investigations go on for a long period of time. Uh, we're planning on being here for probably at least another year or so. Um, how do you develop or implement strategies to sustain your research without losing momentum or focus? Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I got a, I got a guy that uh, has hooked me up with uh, the the necessary necessities. Right. You see, like I I I I, uh, I burn out easily, so I have to I have to eat a lot and you know s take supplements. All right, that's good. Speaking of which. I should use a washroom very soon. I've probably got like uh, maybe another 30 minutes before this balloon pops. Okay. Wow. This is very important, you see. Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, we only have a few more questions, so don't worry about that. Um, how do you navigate public records and archives to gather information related to cryptid sightings? And can you share a situation where this type of research was pivotal in understanding a cryptid legend? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... All right, you're going to edit this next part. So Boston has an archive... I that, Turn off the recorder, no worries. Oh, perfect. So Boston has an, an archive where they keep all the, uh, the, 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 oldest, the oldest of documents, like the construction and everything. Anyway, that was on lockdown, but uh, not for me. Strangely uh, enough, it also led to murder. Turns out, turns out not all people are lizard people. <laughs> And we're turning this back on. Thank you for your honesty. Uh, witness testimonies play a crucial role in cryptid investigations. 
How do you approach analyzing and interpreting witness accounts to extract valuable information for the team? A lot of the people that we find have these accounts are a little on the... Um, I don't mean to offend, but a little on the crazy oh, side. Weird. Yeah, they're weird. They're, they, yeah. they, don't, they, they don't even get us, man. Yeah, so how do you weed out the accurate information from the crazy information? Oh, you don't. Like, like I said, you know what? These things are real to these people, right? And so you take their point of view and you just add it to the mix. Okay. And then one last question. Cryptid investigations can sometimes involve cultural or ecological aspects that are quite sensitive. How do you ensure that your approach is ethically sound uh, and respectful to the communities and environments. Ethically, what's what's that mean? You know what? I think you're going to be a great fit to the team. Perfect. Now. I'm glad to hear. Just a quick question for you. One more here. Are there any questions that you have for us? Yeah, washroom. Now. Uh, just down the hall. <laughs> Okay. So that was our interview with Oliver. I can't believe Oliver got hired. That is that is hilarious. <laughs> I was nervous for that interview. That was like the first uh, job interview I've been nervous for. <laughs> After Oliver's interview, I realized how low the standards are of this workplace. <laughs> or, or how desperate they are. Yeah, looking for any warm body. Not not necessarily desperate, but no desperate. The, no no, oh, yeah. listen listen up. I think you missed this part. Yeah, um, I did. Maybe you didn't, but oh. no, you were there. So, were you there from the start of the interview? Yeah, I think you were. Sorry, I was saying no to your mother, not to you. Um, so all of you guys are skeptics, right? They're looking for somebody who is on the other side. And Oliver is a believer. Crazy person. The other side. Insane. Yeah. Well, so. I currently, I at the moment believe something. There's uh, weird things out there because I uh, witnessed it. And isn't Wyatt like a believer as well? Wyatt is not a believer at all. But you use magic, though, don't you? No. Oh. No, there's no magic in this game. But okay, but he has powers. Uh, the powers that I've allowed him, which Abilities. sounds sounds oh, okay. bad on my part, I uh, are basically just like hunches and like feelings. In fact, I think one is called a hunch. Is it correct? Yeah. And the other one's called feeling. The other one's <laughs> called tune in. It's, it's basically <laughs> like premonitions. I yeah. just don't believe that they're anything other than just uh, like dreams and things like that. I yeah. thought you had something in your throat, <laughs> but it's your voice changer. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is just how he sounds. All right, cool. It's not a phase, it's a mom. Child. It's a child. No, I get it now. Thank you. It you need to occasionally turn people. off your voice changer just for a split spe second it's your voice cracking. Yeah, it's puberty. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you guys spent the night at the Nahani Lodge. Um, did everybody get a good sleep? Or did nobody yes. get a good sleep? I'm a little jet sure I slept well. Um, Victor slept well. Oh, Victor well slept well. Victor didn't get to see what Charlie saw. Oh, Charlie and Victor saw the icy hand. Victor saw Charlie, the icy Charlie hand. and Victor. I didn't that's, think so. That's what I wrote. Okay, well there you go. Um, well then, I did not have a good sleep. Okay, I so I still think I'd have had a good sleep. This morning, you're waking up early, so we're gonna have everybody be waking up at five a.m. So yeah, I'll wake up and make sure everyone else is awake. At 5 a.m., you hear knocks on all of your doors. Uh, Tom's calling in. It's like, all right, guys, you said you want an early start to the morning, so here we go. 
Knock, 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 knock. Let's go, I've been ready. Be right out. Okay, maybe we don't go that far. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> um, okay. It was just Tylenol. He just crushes it up. <laughs> Oh, no. The, day, the daytime stuff. I need the bump. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have a map for us this time? Oh, are you going back to that again? I'll talk to her. Don't worry. You have oh, the map. Have it. It's right in front of you. Oh, sorry. Let me get the map for her. Hold on. I mapped the, map. the map last time. You guys should have had it last time, too. Um. Okay, so... Um, you guys wake up in the morning. Uh, Evelyn calls you down to the banquet room, or not, not Evelyn calls you down, but Evelyn has the banquet room ready for your food. So your meals are all made, regular meal, hash browns, toast, eggs, bacon, sausage type of thing. What? She's like, oh, you guys are, uh, you guys are having an early morning this morning. All right. Not a problem. Um. I hope everybody enjoys, and uh, let me know if you need anything else. Oh, is there right. anything that's what? like no, uh, hand food, like waffles, things I can just grab and go outside? Well, it's not Bacon. sun. It's not sun up yet. It's still dark out. That's uh, fine. So the reason that they had it right now is so that you guys could chat a bit before uh, before you head out. Uh, cause Tom would like to have a discussion about your first day and also introduce you to our new employee. So Tom sits down at the end of the table. So, um, I hope everybody enjoyed their first day in Glacier Ridge. It's beautiful here, isn't it? I kind of did a little bit of exploring on my own and, uh, yeah, it's really nice here. Um, so what are everybody's findings from the first day and what are our plans for the second day here? Uh, I th thought that we were going to go out and see what we could see. Wyatt had wanted to. Yeah, right, the, the, the sun isn't go... the sun isn't up yet. Uh, I believe we were told that at sun up is when we would see it best. So I can't just wait till sun up. We gotta be up there early. Maybe we can catch whatever this thing is. I like it. Let's do it. You want to catch it? Uh. How speaking I mean, speaking of the I like it, let's do it. Everyone, this is Oliver. Oliver is one of our new researchers slash analysts. Uh, I think we're gonna oh. get, along, get along great, you guys. Uh what do they see as they look at you? Um okay, so there's a guy probably a, in his late late forties, let's put him. Uh, he's got a little paperboy hat, kind of crazy eyes, messy hair, um, real heavy, uh, thick wool sports jacket. Five o'clock shadowy going on. Oliver uh, actually came to town before we were here and decided to check some stuff out on his own. And then when he heard from Evelyn that we were a film crew investigating this stuff, he came to the lodge and gave me a resume. So... He is going to be our new assistant slash helper slash researcher slash analyst. So, yeah, see your guys, your guys' facts brought you here too. I'm really excited about this. Can't see, wait to see like what uh, what you guys are working with, and we can share our share our notes. So there you go. Okay, are you uh, are you always like this in the morning? Hmm. You're like like a the energizer bunny on speed oh yeah no yeah no 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 yeah but no oh, okay okay um all right well what's your guys names uh, though i'm maxine or you could call me max pleased to meet you max <laughs> it's nice to meet you too all right. 
I'm uh, Victor. I'm, I'm on. I'm on security. Oh, Victor, good to meet you. Uh, Oliver Gordon, uh, analytics. I'm All Charlie. All I'm also security. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> I have a feeling uh, I'm going to spend a lot of time behind you guys, but in a protected way, not. <laughs> good to meet you. Where are you from, Oliver? Grew up in Boston. Okay. And yourselves? I'm from northern Manitoba. Thompson. Ah. Oh, yeah. Dangerous place. Yeah, it was a rough, a rough time growing up there. So how long have you been here? Uh, I flew in a couple days ago. Literally, like, oh, just okay. before we got here. Just haven't run into oh, it okay. yet. Yeah, I've I just been kind of settling in, uh, getting a, a lay of the land, so to speak. Uh, I really haven't learned anything. You haven't talked to anybody yet? No, no, that's... That's people work. What? Hmm? Okay. Um so so you've been just checking out the area, like the land, like uh, the surrounding area? What have you been doing? I've been checking a lot out of my room. So you just stayed in your room for two days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have our we all have our process. You know, it's very normal. It's very normal. I, I'm surprised we haven't seen you then. Is you just in stayed room? in your room? You didn't leave your room at all? Oh no, 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 no. Okay. So talk. Well, not yet. Oh. Like, I'm, I'm here now. Sure. Yeah. So have you, did you do research? Like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm just, I'm yeah. just confused. Can, no, back in uh, no, I get, I get it. Back in Boston, I did uh, a lot of pouring over their uh the old notes on uh because it's an old city you see and they uh the old architecture it seems like whatever was here has been there for a very long time too you, you get it you get it oh. yes oh, oliver we all get it mm -hmm. um all right so and, you guys who's the, this uh this little one uh is with uh, you guys too yeah. Wyatt. Are you going to introduce yourself, Wyatt? Percept or did you? Perceptive. Hi, I'm Wyatt. This is the best crew that has ever crewed a crew. Um, especially these people over here. They uh, will uh, take care of you. Except uh, that one over there is kind of a monster. He might be a lizard person. Uh, <clears throat> pointing to uh, uh, Nathan's character. Charlie. Charlie? Oh, yeah, Charlie. Uh... <laughs> But um, I, uh, I I am a totally normal child uh, with uh, this crew. We uh, took a break from filming for absolutely no reason. And uh, it's been great. It has been great, hasn't it? Good to meet Wyatt. you. Wyatt. It's been wonderful. I love it. Exactly. <sighs> okay. So uh, you all need to head out on your way right away here hey okay yeah you guys saw something uh, i saw something outside a window last night oh, maybe only a they think they saw something when did, when did you guys see something when the lights went out we talked about this when you're the i know the oliver it didn't look like a lizard person well you saw it too i did see it Possible second lizard person. Well, to be clear, I am not a lizard person. I believe you. And him. What if I tell you he's wrong? I believe you. But then how can he be right and wrong? Why not? 
This is going to be a very interesting day. This is going to go around in circles for a very long time. Uh, Wyatt, if you want, you can take some toast with you. Why don't you guys head out into the field? We'll be here when you get back. Don't even tell me twice. Bye. Oh, hey, wait up. Okay. He's gone. I will grab the toast and run out the door. Uh, I sure. pull out the GPS app and make sure he has one on him. He Charlie, does. you want uh, you want me with Wyatt? That might be best. <laughs> I can stay right. with the rest of the group. Okay, I'm with Wyatt. Good idea, Victor. I'll keep an eye on this one. Uh, thanks, Oliver. I got you. He, yes, Did like, you point he at me he when you said he this one? Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. we, we get it. Okay, so... I guess we're just going to take off into the woods. I, it's like... I know that... Uh, I know that that's where he had talked about seeing... Oh, no, you're not taking off into the woods. You are Where are we going? You're trying town. to find the tracks. There's yes. tracks in the, in the town heading oh, to right. the Alright, and they head into the woods. Alright, All right, quickly, Charlie, take me to the window you saw this beast. Okay, and I walk a block down the road to the pub. Now, where exactly were you sitting? In there. The pub, the pub is not open at 5 a.m. Yeah, that's why I'm just pointing at the building and saying, in there. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I got the master key. <laughs> oh, Oliver, put the gun away. Oh, uh, I, if he's actually doing that, I'm going to grab the gun out of his no, hand. No, duty! <laughs> just, just keep this hidden. And I hand it back. All right. We'll play it your way. Can you just have <laughs> firearms out in the open in the Northwest Territories? In uh, Boston, not Northwest in Territories. <laughs> no, no, but uh, I don't necessarily want to take his gun yet. <laughs> if he does that again, it might be confiscated until we go into the forest. <laughs> but yeah, we... I would I would assume that there are laws here. Oh, oh don't pretend like you don't have guns. I yeah. don't have a gun. Yeah, you do. Ugh. Oh, no. Not on me. Not on you. Oh, You're I correct. I 100% am carrying my gun. Okay, I'm assuming... I would assume that people you, on security you have a, would you have, have a nine millimeter. She didn't Who? bring it with me. Maxine. I'm not, I'm not carrying it with me. Not yeah, she has it, point. but she would leave it in her room. Yeah, locked in a safe. Yeah, because it's what that makes zero sense. It's like you don't want to shoot something. No, I don't want to shoot someone. Why would uh, I want to shoot someone? Actually, Oliver, can I can I see your gun? I don't get you. I'm just you know, we're can, investigating, whoa. Oliver. I, I just I want to make sure it's in good condition. Oh no, Judy's tip top shape. Okay, all right. All right, all right. If you're wanting to do it, roll to manipulate somebody. Okay. That is a four. Make it a one. And a four. So that's an eight. Uh, so uh, Oliver, you mark experience if you do what what he asks. So if you don't want to do it, you don't mark experience. If you do do it, you get experience. Okay, I, okay. With this roll, do I have a choice? If yes, you do. It says they yeah. mark experience if they do what you ask. So if you do what he asks, you get experience. If you don't, nothing happens. Okay. Are you a lizard person? No. Okay, thank goodness. There you go. I, yeah, I take his gun and he's not getting it back anytime while we're in the town. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Don't, don't, don't lose it. I won't. I'll keep and, Judy and safe. Like, and as, and as, soon, as soon as it gets bad, you give it back, right? If you need it, I'll make sure you have it. Okay, right on. Oh, okay. It's still dark. It's still dark outside. Yes. So I'll click on my flashlight and I'll be peeking through the window. Uh, not the window that he saw the lizard from. I'll shine my light around there. What so, lizard? Which, which, uh, okay. 
the lizard person was here, correct? It was standing right here. And it wasn't, right. I don't think it was. So just person. to be clear, I just want to clarify something. Is the cryptid that you believe exists only lizard people? Yeah, man, it's all connected. Okay, I just want to make sure. Perfect. I showed you the drawings. <laughs> it was a bunch of goblins. <laughs> That's what I saw. So I'll, I'll shine the light in there. It's like, which chair were you sitting at? Why does it matter? Because that's going to give us a line of sight. It was standing right here. Well, why don't you just do your own investigating? If you don't want to be helpful. I point at where I was sitting. <laughs> All right. Massive that means... eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead and do me a favor and roll and investigate a mystery. Is that sharp? Uh, it's sharp unless you have something that says otherwise. Nope, that is a 11. I rolled a nine and I have two to sharp. Okay, you can roll an 11. <laughs> so you get to ask one of these questions. What happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What was it going to do? And what is being concealed here? Well, we already know it's a lizard person, so let's ask where exactly it went. So, as you're shining the flashlight, or something we that... Know that... No, you don't know. You... Okay, cool. Um, you are shining the flashlight and catch a glimpse of a uh, gnarled, elongated hand print on the window. Uh, and you follow that down, and it's kind of got icy, like, drip marks, I guess, in the wood grain on the side of the building. And as you follow that down, it keeps on going, and there's a trail leading from that point. All right, Charlie, Maxine. I have showed you the way. Uh, you get to ask one uh, one other question. Oh, what was, what was that list again? You have that list if you want to look at it. Uh, oh, was that on the hunter agenda? Yeah, that's the hunter agenda or okay, reference cool. sheet. Sorry. Is Wyatt with us too? Uh, yes, I think maybe. I don't know. Uh, Wyatt, Are you? With, uh... I run well, off to the. Off. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go to the school, not school playground, where playground? the kids were last. Okay, okay yeah. so Victor's with. Okay. Please move your uh, tokens around just to indicate where you guys actually are. We're at the bar right now. Well, you're not. You're at the playground. Well, I can't grab my token. That's weird. Yeah. One sec. Oh, you know what? No, there we go. Were you grabbing the wrong person? I had the uh, the wrong cursor. Okay. Where the heck am I? Okay. So, uh, you're at the bar, so you're down here. And Maxine, you're with them as well? Yes. Victor is with them at, at the park. Where's the park? park? It's up. I already put you up. there. Oh. Okay, thank you. So is that just Tom at the lodge? Who is that? That's Frankie. Because oh. Frankie's not here yet. Okay. They're not here. Um, okay, so. Uh, Wyatt, what are you doing? Uh, well, actually, sorry, Oliver, you have one more question. Sorry. Um... What is being concealed here? Or is there anything really hidden? If not, let's go with uh, what was it going to do? Uh, no, we can go with what can what is being concealed here. That's fine. Sure. Um, you. Hello. Um. 
with this trail, all it's showing you is a one path. However, last night, it went to the lodge because they saw the handprint on the window there. This path does not lead to the lodge. So you get the feeling like this might be what it wants you to see and its actual true intentions and movements are being concealed from you. Okay, so what happened at the pub here is just a distraction thing that it was going for. That I I can't answer you. But you something happened at the pub, mm -hmm. then something happened at the lodge, but the trail that leads from this is going north and the lodge is south okay so and those two different... those two happenings happened maybe 20 30 seconds apart maybe two minutes three minutes gotcha so they saw essentially the same thing at the lodge and at the pub A no creature with glowing eyes okay at the at the lodge, they saw a frosty handprint appear in the window. And again, I say frosty handprint, but it was like the outline of the hand appeared in frost. Oh, gotcha. Uh, so the hand was not frosty. The exterior was. So it's like somebody placed their hand on the window and then frost started sprouting out from where the hand was. Mm, gotcha. So like when you place your hand on a like a frosted window... Yeah. And like the handprint is clear. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, like I said, skinny, elongated fingers, similar handprint, maybe even the same handprint on this window. Uh, but this window, they didn't see that. They saw the eyes. At the lodge, they saw the hand. Mm. Okay. But there's a handprint at the pub, but the footprints aren't heading to the lodge. They are heading. No. up towards like towards the park possibly like i'm not they, saying to the park they but... go north that's all you have right okay. now it is dark okay. out you can't follow them that far with just a flashlight you can't follow them with a flashlight you can't follow them that far with a flashlight okay, so yeah, you're yeah, standing yeah, yeah. outside okay. the pub okay. you see okay. this the drips go down the wall and then you follow them away but the flashlight only goes so far so far correct Right now, in my mind, you are standing on the porch or the entry point of the bar. What do the drips smell like? Water and wood. All I smell are amphetamines. What? Hmm? Okay, I'm. I think I'm hearing things because I don't know what's happening. Oh Neither. yeah, no, yeah. Neither do I. I just, like... I just wanted to be told. I just wanted to be clear that I was not told that this character would be a drug abuser. I want to be clear on that. We can. <laughs> I got you. You can play it however you want, but I was not told this. Um, okay, so you guys are... So we're heading north? I assume. Wyatt, Victor, yeah. what are you doing? Uh, do I see anyone here or any signs of anything here? Uh, roll to investigate a mystery. Uh, actually, give me a second there, because it might be a read bad situation instead. Let me check. Nope, it's investigating a mystery. Right now, Victor? Yeah. Victor doesn't do that. Right. That was investigate investigate a mystery set, correct? Yeah. What is the bonus for that? Sharp. I thought it showed it on the sheet, but I'm not seeing it. It's sharp. Sharp. And I got a 10. 10. Hold two. So you get to pick two of those questions. 
Uh, if you don't have it up, I'll read them off again here for you. I recommend, just to be clear, everybody have the Hunter reference sheet open just so that you have access to the questions and everything. Uh, so, your questions are, what happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What was it going to do? And what is being concealed here? Now, I will state, these questions do have to be, they have to make sense. So you asking me what can hurt it when it's not even around you, that doesn't make sense. Uh, well, I mean, yes and no, but I, I'm with it. Uh, what uh, is being concealed here? Let me... Uh, Were you reading a bad situation or investigating a mystery? Investigating a mystery. Oh, okay, sorry. Never mind. It's not a bad situation just yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you take a look around, and as you're looking around, uh, you catch a movement in the woods. Not necessarily what you think it is, but you catch movement in the woods, and that's what's being concealed here. Okay. Um, it was Phil, right? Who's Finn? Finn. It's Finn. Finn. It's Finn. Hey, Finn, is that you? No answer. Okay. My second question is... Can I do where did it go? Sure. I'll do where did it go. So, again, this doesn't necessarily have to do with the monster. Now we're having to do with what you saw. Uh, yeah. When you saw it, you saw a brief movement. And again, it's dark out still, so you can't see perfectly clear. But you saw it move uh, to the south west. Uh, the woods that I have on screen are not the complete size of the woods. They do expand around the entire town. You haven't drawn that in yet? <sighs> then uh, I'm going to head southwest towards where I think it is. And you're following him. I'm following Wyatt. I don't know if that will if that works. You're going to put it somewhere else. But... No, it's fine. You can just put it in front. I understand you're going into the woods, and that's pretty much all I need to know, right? The woods is a massive area. I don't need you to follow through everything. So, as you step into the woods, uh you need to slightly rely on other senses above sight. You have the camera out, you have a night vision mode, so you're able to see what's going on around you. Um, Victor, a little less so, um, but you are you have a line of sight on Wyatt, and you saw this thing as well, because he pointed it out to you. Um, so... You guys are going into the woods. You're just chasing after this thing. What are you doing? Yeah, I think okay. it's Finn. Okay. Hey, Finn, come back. Are you going to go work on the castle without me? We got to find the monster this morning. Um. Sorry, I'm just trying to see here. What are you trying to see? Oh, hey. It's Frankie. I need you, you to roll me break and, everything? an act on... I am ready for you to break everything. I'll fix it. Uh, roll me an act under pressure roll, please, and thank you. What did I walk into? Just this wait until you... Head. Just wait until you meet uh, Oliver. Then you'll be really questioning what you walked into. You'll be like, it's time for me to leave now. 
to right. put it well, into perspective. I'll see you guys later. We went out, walked across the street, and he, he already needed his gun confiscated. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We just do things a little differently in Boston, right? <laughs> potato, potato? Mm -hmm. Ah, damn it. She, she gets it. <laughs> Where did my dice go? Actually, it's they get it. Who are they? Me. And? <laughs> and who else? Okay. <laughs> We're not doing no. this. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> okay, I found my dice. We're good. Uh, okay. Um Act under pressure. Which one what is that? No no, uh, it's not you, it's it's uh Oh. Uh Cody. Wyatt, that's the name. Do you need to roll pressure? Yes. Yeah. You're you're going into a difficult situation of having a trek through the woods trying to chase after this thing, so you are going to act under pressure. So that do I plus cool. The cool is a zero, so I have a seven. A seven? Okay, so that's a mixed success. Mm -hmm. Um She's in here. Hey uh <laughs> Frankie, can you do me a favor and sit still for a second? <laughs> Is that where you're gonna be sitting? Hold on. I don't know where I'm at on my camera. Hold on. Okay. This is generally where I will be sitting, yes. Perfect. All done. All right. Uh, do I need to read a bad situation? No, you don't need to read a bad situation because it's not a bad situation. You would need to act under pressure if I was getting you to do that too, which... Uh, no, I'm not going to get you both to do it. Okay, so... <laughs> so, you have to pick a worse outcome, hard choice, or price to pay. Oh, dear. Uh... I will choose a price to pay. <laughs> Everybody has the same reaction to his voice every time. Um, okay, so. Uh, as you are going through the woods, you are following footsteps that you're hearing. You're looking through this night vision camera. And as you're going through, you come across a large black bear. Ooh. And as you come upon it, it rears up on its back legs. And you need to give it something in order for it to not attack you. I am going to pull out... Uh, some of my uh, a toast and a candy bar. It's a kid likely has a candy bar on him. Probably, yeah. And I'm gonna throw the toast and the candy bar to the bear. The candy bar in in a wrapper. I'll unwrap it real fast and toss it. Sorry, I had to close my window. Um, you toss over your toast and your candy bar. Um, it leans down and sniffs it a couple of times and realizes there's a lot better meal in front of it and starts walking towards you. Uh, now do I need to read a bad situation? Uh, read a bad situation. You could protect somebody. You could kick some ass up to you. Read a bad situation. What's the biggest threat? I can tell you that real quick. Um, but decide what you want to do. You want to protect someone? Yeah, I think we need to protect him. Okay. Chapter roll. 
Roll plus tough. Uh, 10 plus 2, I think. Oh, you rolled a 10? Okay, yep, so yep. you protect them, but you also get to choose an extra. Sorry, is it 10 plus 2? I think so. I'm just going to check my tough. Hold on. Because that's 12. That's bloody good. Oh, no. He's looking. This takes me a second. Look, look faster. Yep, yeah, 10 plus 2, 12. All right, so both you and the character you are protecting are unharmed and out of danger. So as this uh, bear is, starts growling and walking towards Wyatt, uh, Wyatt kind of chucks him some stuff and freezes in place. Uh, you dive in front of Wyatt and grab him and bolt away. In the process, Wyatt, you drop the camera. Okay. You're muted there, uh, Frankie. Oh. If uh, Wyatt doesn't... Sorry. Go ahead. If Wyatt, if Wyatt doesn't say anything about the camera... And I don't say anything, but if he says something about the camera, I just tell him we'll go back and get it later. Okay. I don't so, say anything about the camera. You guys run out of the woods and uh, back into the street. 